and the form is created through um, our state legislature um, and essentially the form has been very much in the same format uh, for at least since 1995 mm -hmm. um, and that is that uh, someone would be able to say this is who I designate here's a series of checkoff boxes you got to initial your name you're called the principal when you're giving someone the power of attorney mm -hmm. and um, the principal would sign and there would be a date and you would sign it in front of a notary usually the attorney and off you would go and if the person needed that to use that power of attorney then it would be there uh, when the person no longer had the mental or physical ability to manage their finances. Um, what happened though is that we have of course good and bad, mm -hmm. mostly good, people take care of their parents, um, hopefully they have a power of attorney, but what happened is that we also had situations where um, People didn't have maybe immediate family, maybe nieces or nephews, or children that they became estranged from, and um, the power of attorney, the agent, started misusing the funds. Mm -hmm. We also had scenarios where um, banks, families would go in with their power of attorney. The child said, knows the mom or dad is incapacitated now. They have received and remembered the instructions from their parents. They know where the parent keeps the document. They walk into a bank and the bank says, oh, your parent did this 10 years ago. This is stale. Oh, my word. And the child is flabbergasted. What do they do? Because the banking yeah. industry yeah. decided that they got to make up the rules. So we had a couple of bad things going on. Wow. Um, and so the legislature decided after a series of cases um, that they were going to make significant changes to the law. And so we now have those changes effective September 1. Um, the other problem we had with powers of attorney before September 1 is since it was only a four-page document, um, a lot of people were lulled into the sense of uh, a do-it-yourselfer. And you could walk into a stationery store, we used to call them five and dimes, and you can... Remember those? Um, yeah, I, remember. I don't think they exist I like anymore. Them. I had fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and people would walk out with a blank document wow. and try and fill it in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we had problems with that as well. Mom, do you have any questions for Beth so far? Um, my question is if uh, a document were uh, signed and dated, say, 10 years previously, mm -hmm. okay, uh, should that document be reviewed? Okay, and that's really the first issue that we're dealing with. Um, the law started, was effective September 1st, and a week before the law, my own parents, who did estate planning many years ago with a different attorney, my dad called me up and he said, so what do I have to do now? And I thought, well, if my dad doesn't know, <laughs> then most of my clients don't know. Um, so the answer to that is that uh, what the law does is it changes dramatically not only the form, we are dealing with at least a 7 to 15 page document now. Not likely wow. a do-it-yourself. Not a do-it-yourself yeah. at all. But what the law is very clear about is that if someone has a validly signed power of attorney mm -hmm. uh, that they executed 10 years ago, like you said, mm -hmm. um, that they do not have to redo their power of attorney. Okay. And so, you know, what does that mean? Validly executed means that they signed it when they had mental mm -hmm. ability, mm -hmm. they signed it in front of a notary, mm -hmm. and that the notary actually notarized it correctly. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. But what it means also is that really the burden is on the consumer now, whether it's a senior or just a couple who's doing estate planning who, who maybe did it several years ago. Mm -hmm. The burden is on you now. You put into effect it to hopefully... Um, make it easier to catch wrongdoing, mm -hmm. um, but it raises a very serious question. So if you have uh, someone who's been the power of attorney for many years um, and now a senior or other person has some sort of decline mm -hmm. or is exhibiting signs of dementia or has had a stroke. Which is very subjective. The decline can be yeah, subjective. depends on, right, the, de the decline can be subjective. Um, and suddenly 
an aide or a chauffeur. We've had all those cases. Um, I, I just have watch a, a lot of TV. <laughs> I have a case right now where I the woman. chauffeur. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but there's, I have a case right now where the senior met uh, the woman at a local senior center, and the woman befriended her, and eventually the woman did have a health decline, yeah. ended up in the hospital, and um, this woman eventually became uh, oh. her power of attorney. And we're now in court because we are trying to prove that she illegally moved money around as power of attorney. Ooh. And um, so it's happening. Whether this um, new law will stop that, it's hard to say. What the new law requires, which is very different, is that it's not just the principal, the senior, or the individual who signs anymore. The power of attorney document actually doesn't take effect until the people or person you've designated as your agent signs in front of a notary. So that's a big change. So just because Ruth would sign a power of attorney until I actually send it to you, mm -hmm. Bonnie, to have you sign as the agent, it actually does not take effect. Okay. In addition, there are warnings before your signature that you have to read that say what your responsibilities are. Now, why is it called, Mom and I were talking about this before the show, and Mom, you said to me you thought power of attorney was your attorney, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So It could be. So could it be, and why is it called power of attorney if it doesn't have to be an attorney? <laughs> I have, unfortunately, <laughs> I have to admit, I have no idea why it's called power of attorney. It probably goes back to old English law. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but sure, you could appoint an attorney as a power of attorney, as your agent. I think uh, as an attorney, it would put the attorney in a, in a compromising position. Um, okay. So <laughs> if there's any attorneys <laughs> watching, I wouldn't recommend it. That's, but that's my personal that's opinion. That took care of that. <laughs> it was just a question. It's a good question. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it's a term. Now, who gets the paperwork once it's signed? Do you make duplicates for just the, the person and the agent? Do you hide it under your pillow? Do you put it in a safe deposit box? Again, it's a great question. What if you lose it? It's a great question. Um, most of the time... I was going to say, is there an internet repository for these where you could scan it and put it on a website somewhere? Well, that's a, that's a growing area yeah. uh, where we're creating in a different area a repositories for scanned healthcare proxies uh -huh. as more and more... It, right now, it perhaps as individual attorneys, we scan documents. Mm -hmm. And, and it, if a doctor or a client agent, the son or daughter, calls and says, you know, the hospital needs the health care proxy, we can actually email the scanned image. But um, so there are movements towards repositories. They're a little mm -hmm. expensive right now for the client. But for powers of attorney, um, yeah, generally the original document is given to the client. So the client no different than before, mm -hmm. has to uh, find a safe place to keep the documents in their home, um, whether it's a file cabinet uh, or a particular drawer in their home where they keep all their legal documents. Mm -hmm. And whoever's your agent, sh e whether they've signed it or not, whether the power of attorney is in effect or not, they need to know where those documents are. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the, the attorney is only going to be keeping a copy. When push comes to shove, there is a way to use a copy, mm -hmm. but um, there's some forms that go with it that have to that require certification. So, you know, you got to keep track of your documents as you go through life. Absolutely, it's telling me something. It's <laughs> telling all of us something. Yeah. Mom, how many of your friends do you think have power of attorney? I have no idea. You can ask them now that we've no, done the show. No, I would not. Well, I could. Yeah, okay. I could. You I, could take I, an informal survey. Yeah, we could have a, a luncheon meeting, and all of a sudden I'd pose a question. They say, you're giving me indigestion. What are you talking <laughs> about? I bet you most of your, your friends have them. I bet I, you they do. I have, no, I never discussed it with them. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I There's think only, only one or two. Uh, friends who I would approach and ask about that. Because uh, f many of your friends were married to attorneys, or several of them were. Mm -hmm. Well, so actually, ah. that would be the shoemakers. Uh, oh. The shoemakers' children, children yeah. have no, no shoes. shoes. Right. Yes, right. And you know something we forgot to do? We forgot to set the stage for this show is taking place in September 2009. 
Now, I know we will probably replay this for the, during the rest of 2009, and you might be watching us in 2010.